Well, all eyes will be on Philip Lowe tomorrow as the Reserve Bank prepares to hand down its monthly rates decision. And the big question is, well, will they raise rates again? Joining me to discuss is Chief Economist at ACY Securities, Clifford Bennett. Clifford, obvious question, will rates rise again tomorrow? Yes, they will. Why? Um, because the RBA is none too clever. Um, I think it'll be an error, and I don't think we need any more rate hikes in Australia, and I think there's a very strong economic, economic argument for that. Uh, I don't think these rate hikes are going to bring inflation down. I think they've done enough. I mean, they've made two big errors. Can, can, you know, really, you know, it's the RBA, so hit delete, start again. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, two years, a year ago, we were saying the RBA should be raising interest rates now, early, yep. so in small increments, in a steady path, so they don't have to do precisely what they've ended up doing. So they've made two huge blunders. Everyone focuses on the RBA is making a mistake. Are they raising rates too high? The mistake is they didn't raise rates mm. gently sooner, right? So where are they now and what can you do about this inflation? Um, the RBA thought we would never get the global inflation wave hitting our shores, but we are. Uh, but what do you do? It. What's the correct policy now? And the correct po policy now, I believe, is maybe one more rate hike, but around here, let it go. Because what they're doing is they're using a 1960s, 1980s playbook to address a problem that yeah. is a very this-century <clears throat> problem. It's a very different well, animal. And they're, they're punishing people who did what they were told to do, which is COVID came along, interest rates went through the floor, we were told, go and borrow money because it's cheap, it's good for the economy, we're going to keep the economy pumping. People went and did it. Uh, now their interest rates are, are going... Well, their, their bills on their mortgages are going through the roof. We haven't even seen at the half of it yet because there's still people waiting to come off their fixed rate deals right. and that will continue as the year That's goes right. on. So they will get massive bill shock. And when you look at the numbers in terms of who is spending and who is not, and I think we've got some uh, numbers here to put on the screen, right. if you break it down by age bracket... The only people whose rate of spending is higher than the rate of inflation, this is from ComBank, you can see on the screen there, are over 55s. Everyone under the age of 55 is spending at a lower rate than the rate of inflation, i.e. their spending is going backwards Everyone in real terms. property rich. Correct, B because, because they are the ones paying all the bills. Meanwhile, you've got people who've got lots of money or more money than the rest of us, um, and they are benefiting from interest rates going up because they've got money in the bank, so they're getting more yeah. savings than they're spending. So how do, you, how do you actually balance it to stop punishing people who are already doing it it's hard... A very good summary. With, with, yeah. ..without, with, you know, I, I, and stop I, other people spending? I liked what you said, punishing for being told... What, Correct. Doing what it's exactly told. what That's it is. That's a very nice summation. I mean, no central banker in the world has ever said we're not going to raise interest rates till 2024 years in advance. That's never happened before. That was another disaster. But I think what we have is we do have a problem inflation. We have to re realise that inflation will eat away at the economy and it mm. will take away jobs. But at the moment, it's the stated, stated objective of the RBA to create unemployment, which is, you know, it, you should be trying to get inflation down with minimal pain, but they don't seem to be too worried about mm. the pain. They want pain. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, a lot of this inflation, I said it a year and a half ago, two years ago, is actually profit margins widening. Mm. But it's justifiable that profit margins widen because there was a lot of uncertainty in the world. Yeah. And you've got to remember, just very quickly, I know I'm going very historical here, but the 20 years before that, you couldn't raise prices without losing market share because of globalisation, mm. competitive price pressures were real. And then COVID hit, lo and behold, first time in two decades, the whole world could raise prices yeah. from the coffee shop to the global yeah. corporation. They all did. And who wouldn't? Who right. wouldn't? So that, that inflation, you do not stop no. By Correct. hitting struggling Australian families. And I mean, there's real stress in the community. Well, and the, the struggle is being broken up. The struggle the is, is palpable. I mean, I was uh, on Sherry Markson's show earlier tonight. She was talking about a story uh, of people now who, I think it's some 900,000 people are working two jobs or more. It's the highest it's ever been. And there's a story in the Oz today, uh, economists talking about the fact that if we have one or two more interest rate rises, we won't necessarily go into recession, but you'll see an economic stagnation. Um, we will basically hit the pause button. But at the same time, we're being told, OK, uh, the unemployment rate has to go up to try and help inflation, but we're going to import hundreds of thousands of extra people into the country to fill jobs that can't be filled. What, am I going there's, mad here? There's no central planning committee. Um, what can you say? I mean, these policies fight each other. Uh, I think it's important to note, though, with 
the interest rate hikes any more is just too much pain for people. And also, you've got to realise the context that the interest rate hikes are now happening in is this valley of economic activity that we were going mm. to hit anyway, because all this, all the economic activity that would have been occurring now normally was sucked back into the post-COVID boom by the world's you know, most generous uh, fiscal stimulus and near zero interest rates. So what they did was they sucked out of the future economic growth, mm. they left a hole, and now in the midst of that hole, slowing, we're getting to have higher rates. I think we're definitely going to have a recession. We've uh, we've only got 45 seconds left. If we go into recession, where do we end up? How bad does it get? It's Well, we'll flirt with recession. We'll have below trend growth. We'll have near zero, I think, for six to 18 months. It could be as long as one to three years of subpar growth. It's not a it's not an easy fix. It's not no. a quick fix. And, and, and the pain, it would seem, is only going to get worse. Clifford, thank, thank you, you for, for joining me tonight. Pleasure.